Hello and welcome to another episode of Hollywood Wargaming. And in this episode, we are going to be starting the first of our Bolt Action Unit Guide series, which is going to cover all of the unit types that we see appear throughout the Bolt Action armies, and discuss how they will slot into that reinforced platoon, and whether they are worth including in your collection or not. And if you guys have spent any time looking over the rules in Bolt Action and the various factions, you will very quickly realize that this game is not like other war games, as most units across the board are going to be pretty similar. And while that can become very monotonous at times, it does make the game very balanced, and reflects the nature of a historical war game, as nobody in 1942 was fielding beefed up super soldiers wearing power armor. And aside from certain advancements in technology... Bolt Action is a game that represents a large variety of modern militaries who did end up operating very similarly, even if some of them weren't quite up to par. So with that introduction to this unit guide out of the way, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our first type of unit here, along with two keywords that are very commonly associated with this unit. And this will be, of course, your inexperienced infantry. And while for the most part we will be referring to inexperienced infantry as squads of their own, this video is going to be a sort of general guide to inexperienced units and why they exist in bolt action and may exist within your list. On top of all that, we are going to be covering the Shirkers special rule along with the Green special rule, which are two special rules that do appear specifically on inexperienced troops. So what are inexperienced troops? Well, anyone who is familiar with warfare, especially the history of warfare, will know that for a large part of history, professionalized militaries were not always a thing. On top of that, even when professional militaries did exist, when manpower became scarce in a nation, things like the draft and conscription, if they weren't already in effect, would come into play, and many times, soldiers were rushed through training to fill up empty slots on the battlefield, even if they weren't fully prepared to do so. And in darker situations, many of which occurred on the Eastern Front in World War II, civilian populations with no prior military experience or inadequate ages, be it old or young, were forced to fight for their lives. So if there was one adjective I would have to use to sum up inexperienced soldiers, it would be the word desperate. And that definitely still applies right into Bolt Action's rule sets. On the sliding scale of units in bolt action, you are going to have three main options. The most commonly taken is going to be your regular troops, which have baseline stats, followed up by a leadership of 9, which tend to come in at a respectably favorable point cost. After that, you are going to have your veteran soldiers, who are going to be a bit more pricey, but will have one extra leadership value, boosting them up to a leadership value of 10, backed up by increased durability as they can only be wounded on a 5+, plus compared to the regular infantry's 4+. Plus. And at about 20% more points, it is a fair trade-off there, especially when you take into account the fact that most infantry veteran units can take more special weapons, so that overhead premium cost isn't just buying you better courage and durability, but also the access to more firepower per unit. And on the opposite scale of the veteran infantry, we are going to have the inexperienced. And rather than your unit improving from their regular baseline stats, they are actually going to be getting worse for a decrease in points. So while your regular infantry squad is going to be a courage value of 9, who are going to receive wounds on a 4+, plus, your inexperienced squad is going to drop down to a courage value of just 8 and receive wounds on a 3+. Plus. Meanwhile, they will be decreasing about 30% in points. So at face value, you have a pretty standard trade-off here. You pay 30% more for a veteran unit that has increased toughness and morale, or you can take 30% off your regular unit's points costs and get a lower morale along with an easier chance to wound. However, Warlord Games decided to take one extra step here and really spit in the face of inexperienced troops and give them a flat minus one to hit on any attack roll they make. That's right, if you go to the hit modifier chart in the Bolt Action rulebook, you will see a flat minus one for the unit being inexperienced. And in a game whose almost sole combat mechanic is hit modifiers, that is a massive L on these inexperienced units, and in my opinion, makes inexperienced units pretty much unusable in bolt action. With a lower courage value, inexperienced units are already going to be struggling to activate, which on its own is a huge gambit that immediately diminishes the value of a unit. But even if they do manage to activate, 
that minus one hit modifier is often going to push them into that double six to hit range, which makes units nigh useless offensively. So while upgrading a unit in bolt action to veteran status gives them two bonuses for 30 points, downgrading them to inexperienced is going to give them three major drawbacks while dropping the same percentage as that upgrade. So we're going to go ahead and break down the idea of the inexperienced units by taking a look at it from three different angles. The first of which is going to be their courage value of 8, which is going to be one lower than the standard courage value of 9. And when you look at the math behind a 2d6 system, this basically means once this inexperienced unit receives one pin marker, they drop down to a 50-50 chance of activating next turn. Meanwhile, a regular unit still has about a 72% chance of activating with one pin marker on them, which equals a huge drop in battlefield efficiency over a span of 6 turns, as your unit will be missing out on almost every opportunity to gain back its points if it fails to activate. So while going from regular to veteran will give you a 10% bonus in chance of activating with one pin on you, going from regular to inexperienced will drop you 20%, double that of the veteran increase despite being the same inflection of points. So when it comes to leadership stat, despite paying 30% less than regular, you're essentially losing double the amount of efficiency that you would be paying extra for with a veteran squad. After that, we are going to have the increase in potential to wound this unit, as they will go from being a 4 plus to wound down to a 3 plus with inexperienced squads, meaning that any weapon with a penetration value is going to drop them down to a 2 plus to wound, almost guaranteeing that you will be taking massive casualties. And while this is a major drawback, I would say that this is the one stat decrease that scales pretty appropriately with the decrease in points, as going from 66.66 to 50 to 33.33 is in perfect line with a 30% increase or decrease with points. So yes, inexperienced units die easier, but it is scaled pretty fairly with their points cost. And hey, there are a lot of times where even veteran units are getting wounded on a 2 plus. And in scenarios like that, it is nice to say to yourself, hey, it's a good thing I didn't pay for that extra toughness. But lastly, we are going to have the third distinctive drawback of inexperienced troops, and the one that I think really pushes inexperienced troops over the edge in terms of unusability, and that is that flat minus one hit modifier. If you guys go back and look at my US faction review, I will tell you that one of the strongest national traits in the game is the fact that the US can move and fire rifles without suffering that minus one hit modifier, as there are many scenarios in which that keeps you hitting on a natural six, and not having to roll double sixes to score a single pin marker. Meanwhile, inexperienced troops get the opposite end of that stick, as inexperienced troops really have to set themselves up perfectly to ensure that they are not hitting their enemy on double sixes. For example, two units are hiding behind heavy cover, engaging each other across a city street at long range. Your opponent's unit is a regular infantry squad, suffering minus two to hit for the hard cover that you're in, and minus one because they are in long range, which means they will be hitting you on a six plus. So they roll about 12 dice, and statistically speaking, score two hits, which puts a pin on your inexperienced units, and kills one to two of them. Meanwhile, your inexperienced squad returns fire on them, but with their inexperienced minus one to hit on top of that long range and hard cover, they are going to be hitting on double sixes, and if you're going by statistics, they fail to even put a single pin on your opponent's unit. And if you really want to go further and get into the theoretical meta of such a scenario, your inexperienced unit would struggle to activate next turn with a 50-50 morale check, and your opponent's regular squad would continue to hammer them into submission, while other units operated freely around them without retaliation. So with that scenario out of the way, I hope you guys understand why I and many other bolt action players heavily advise you not to use inexperienced units. You essentially lose 20% chance of activating with one pin marker, and even if you do reliably activate, there's a good chance you're not going to be able to score any kills, let alone pin markers. And when you guys play enough matches of bolt action, you're going to learn that the main two mechanics in the game is going to be hit modifiers and pins. Positioning yourself to mitigate hit modifiers is going to allow you to get more pins and potential kills to reduce your opponent's battlefield control by making sure his units either can't activate or operate at a reduced capacity when they do activate. 
And when you consider those two core game mechanics and stack them up to the points percentage difference between a regular and inexperienced units, it really just doesn't make any sense to take inexperienced units. But wait, you say, what about the points? What about the fact that these units are cheaper and it's going to help you get more activation dice into your bag? Because really, in wargaming, isn't that the point of taking weaker troops? And I would reply to that with, yes, in most balanced wargames, that is the point of inexperienced or weaker troops. But you guys gotta remember that Warlord Games wrote the rules to this, and in a 1,000 point reinforced platoon list, which is the standard playstyle for bolt action, that 30% saving in points cost is likely only gonna be able to net you one extra troop unit, And at the end of the day, what good is one more unit if all four of them are failing to activate and do their job? So for the most part, I would highly recommend avoiding the inexperienced veterancy level at all costs. There are very few scenarios in which it's going to get you enough extra activation points to make it worth it. And that extra flat minus one to hit really drives these guys into the ground for me. However, if you are really looking to pinch pennies in your list, There are a few units out there that don't really take that hit modifier into consideration. The most obvious of which is going to be indirect fire weapons, such as mortars or multiple launchers. Now, with mortars, Warlord really seemed to use their noggins here and take that inexperienced veterancy into account when they were thinking about balance, because they made it so inexperienced mortar squads cannot make use of spotters. That means they need direct line of sight to their opponents, which overall is going to reduce the liberty of targets they can choose on the battlefield, and also bring their weaker toughness into effect as they will have to be within line of sight of the enemies that they want to shoot, which goes both ways. Still, on units like light mortars or multiple launchers that don't have access to spotters anyways, really could save you a few points here, especially with the multiple launchers, which is a fan favorite to run as inexperienced. Multiple launchers hit on sixes no matter what, and with a rather impressive 72-inch range, they don't have to worry too much about the enemy returning fire on them. So, while for the most part I do blanket statement recommend avoiding inexperienced troops, multiple launcher artillery pieces are maybe the only one that I would recommend doing it with, as they don't really operate like most other units in the game, which really nullifies a lot of those inexperienced drawbacks. As for mortars, I would recommend taking them as a regular veterancy and using a spotter, but if you really need more HE in your list and you're strapped for points, running them as inexperienced and just getting line of sight with your opponents is a viable option, just not one that I would recommend. So while that does cover my opinions on inexperienced troops, there are a few different keywords that inexperienced troops often have that represent what kind of mentality they have going into the battlefield. And the first of these two is going to be the shirkers keyword, which basically represents troops that are forced to fight against their will, that have absurdly low morale and dedication to the cause. And the shirkers keyword is going to do two things to this unit. First of all, they are going to have to take a morale check every time they activate, even if they do not have pins, which can be pretty punishing when your morale is only 8. And when these units do start to receive pins, they are going to count those pin markers as doubled, meaning one pin they will test as if they have two pins, and with two pins they will test as if they have four. So overall, these guys are very hard to get to do anything, and should they get caught up in something like an airstrike or an artillery barrage, they are likely going to be out for a few turns, rendered completely inactive. However, units with the shirker keyword are going to be dropping another 30% points below that of inexperienced troops, meaning they will cost 60% less than the regular infantry squad, which makes them incredibly affordable and honestly a pretty decent way if you need to pad out your dice pool. So overall, I gotta say, if you're looking for a unit that's going to pad out your activations and you don't really expect to do anything on the battlefield, shirkers are going to go a lot further for you than a regular inexperienced squad. Still, these units are truly absolute paper, and I have played rounds where I have an entire mob of these guys surrounding a high-ranking officer, and they still fail to activate for a majority of the game. And on top of that, not a whole lot of factions have access to shirker units, as they do tend to represent some of the factions that implemented more immoral and desperate methods to shore up their manpower. But after the shirkers keyword, we are going to have another common occurring keyword on inexperienced units, which will more or less be the opposite of shirkers. 
And that is going to be the green keyword. And green pretty much represents troops that are eager to fight, but may not have received the proper training in order to do so. So a unit with the green keyword is going to start off as inexperienced. However, the first time they take a casualty, you will roll a d6. On a roll of 1, this unit is going to receive an extra d6 pins, as they basically realize they have run into the battle headstrong and are now faced with the reality of warfare and the fact that they may very soon die. Meanwhile, on a roll of 2, 3, or 4, the unit continues fighting as a regular inexperienced unit, with no changes made. But if you manage to roll a 5 or a 6 after receiving your first casualty, this unit will be immediately upgraded to a unit with the regular experience value which will up their morale and make them harder to wound. And as you guys can probably tell, taking a unit with the green keyword is pretty much a gamble. The idea here is that you pay 30% less for your infantry units with the hopes that they will become regular squads and begin to fight harder and have a little bit more dominance on the battlefield than what you paid for. Still, green is a risk reward system. And with how bad inexperienced troops are on their own, I think you have way more to lose here than you do to gain. Still, green is an incredibly fun keyword to have on your units, and if you are playing scenario battles, it's one that I definitely recommend trying out. And there are even units within certain factions, such as the Japanese Bamboo Spear Fighters or the Hitler Youth who can make a little bit further use out of this green special keyword, which can be quite fun to play, even if it's not totally competitive. So overall, what do I think about inexperienced troops and the keywords that commonly come with them, being shirkers and green? Well, I think shirkers and green both have more utility than just taking barebone inexperienced troops. I don't think I'm being controversial when I say that inexperienced units, be it tanks, vehicles, transports, or infantry, are vastly overcosted for their performance, and almost any player who knows what's what will tell you to avoid inexperienced units at all costs. Meanwhile, the shirkers and green keyword are both thematic and fun, and shirkers can be used in certain scenarios where you need to flush out your dice pool though it's definitely the most desperate of those scenarios, and I would recommend building a list that doesn't have to take them. Meanwhile, the green keyword is just way too much of a gambit for me to endorse, unless you are playing more thematic scenarios, or you just tend to have incredibly hot dice. So overall, I hope this video serves as a good example of why not to field inexperienced troops, and while this is something I hope that Warlord changes in the future, for the time being, guys, just field regular troops or cough up the points for veterans. But that will wrap up our first video in this unit guide series. I'm very excited to start doing these videos as I think it is going to help a lot of bold action players understand the overall meta and strategy that spans across the game. But if you guys have any recommendations on how I should do these videos, please leave them in the comments below. But as always, if you guys like the video, go ahead, leave a like, Consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications, and until next time, take care.